are in Orlando today with Kevin, the Orlando Gardener. He has his own YouTube channel, The Orlando Gardener, and he is like growing mangoes all over the place. <laughs> He's got like a little hidden garden of Eden, except for it's bigger than I thought. And he's got over a hundred mango trees. And what I noticed is there are a lot of trees in pots and then there are a lot in the ground. And so we have a lot of, of viewers that are interested in growing mangoes in pots. So I was hoping that you could, you know, like give us a little background as far as what you have found to be, like, you know, things that make growing in pots successful. What factors that have you uh, figured out that makes, um, you know, it possible to grow mangoes in pots for years? Uh, I think you have grown certain ones for about three years in pots. Mm -hmm. and, and, and more. Yes. Uh, so, you know, like, what do you do to keep them healthy and productive while they're in pots? Okay, well, that is that is a good question, and um, it's something that I develop over time with trial and error. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And what I figured out was fish emotions and uh, compost and rain water. Um, what I'm a fisherman as well. And when I don't go fishing, I'll go to the neighborhood fish market and uh, the, the fish heads. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll come back and I'll pull a layer, maybe about uh, about two to three inches back uh, in the soil that's in the pot uh, and uh, put the fish heads down. So so the fish market, I, I haven't been to the fish market forever, but I'm assuming they throw out a lot of the stuff when they're, they're filleting a fish for a customer. Mm -hmm. And so the, all that stuff, is that what you're talking about, or do you um, do you buy the fish heads? I because I've heard of fish head soup, never had it. Uh, but you know, like, what's the what kind of arrangement do you have with them? Yeah, uh, I'll buy fish at times because you know my wife and I we do eat fish regularly. Uh, but the the throwaway stuff. Yeah. The throwaway stuff, the backbones, the head, the tails, stuff like that that they're getting rid of anyway. Mm -hmm. And I just you know it's like going to a Starbucks for the car coffee grounds. Right, they don't yeah. need them and they love to give it to gardeners. Yeah, save it from the trash, right, you know, exactly. on the landfill. Yeah, exactly. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I pull, I rake back the, the leaves and, and I do that and I add, and also every year I add compost and a little bit of fresh dirt via um, uh, a really breathing type soil or either just a little sand, but I constantly add, every year I add a little bit. Yeah, because it, it sinks down, because you're using a lot of organic matter, so yes. that that will just keep on sinking down, so you add stuff to the top, yes. the roots grow up into that area, and it, it keeps sinking, yes. so, except for the sand. The sand stays sand. Yes. It's like everything else <laughs> just, you know, gets in, you know, eventually into your ground, right, because yeah. it goes out with the water after it decomposes. Yeah, that's right, but I, I found that that fish emotion is is you know is so important so important they really just I, I, I started it by thinking about what we were taught in school about the Indians putting the fish in the ground mm -hmm. next to the corn yeah blah 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 and so I just tried it and then I went online and I saw that people use fish emotions for you know for gardening and so initially before I started putting the fish heads in there what I would do is take a five gallon bucket and I would put the, the fish parts in there cover it up put it in the back of the property go ahead and tell my neighbor Look, I'm gonna give you some fresh eggs. <laughs> I'm gonna give you fresh eggs coming up soon. Yeah. No you problem. Put, put up with the smells. We got good stuff coming over. You know? yeah, it's like... yeah. And I have really, really good neighbors. They they know because they're gonna, you know, they've been introduced to mangoes they never thought existed. You know, I, I go and share, you know, I actually had a city official come here and um, she said, Kevin, you know, this is really, uh, this is a, a, a community garden, you know, and mm -hmm. should be labeled 
as a community garden. But I share it with the community, and so yeah, they're, they're cool with it. But I normally put it on the back side of the property, cover it up real, real good, and, and just take it and, and pour the fish emotions, you know, in the pots and a little bit of compost every year. And uh, I have no problems with them being in the pot, not at so, all. So does the fish emulsion attract animals? Do you think that the raccoons are like wanting that fish emulsion? It's smelling like dessert. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the possums. Oh yeah. Yeah, that that is an issue at times, but that's why I got got the know, dogs. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, as you as you do, I I have dogs and they'll bark. And sometimes I come out here and the, and the critters are up the tree. You know, they be up the tree all night. All they do, they hear the, the dogs barking and they just take off running. But it has been I have had no problems with any trees and pots since I found that out. Uh, and I'm, I may, maybe once a year, Chris, maybe twice, put some Epsom salt. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit, just a little bit. But the fish emulsion and the rainwater, I got buckets and barrels in the back that are full of rainwater. And I just put that in there and the trees, they're happy. Yeah, they're your trees it. look great. They're, they're very, very much loving the care. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, of course, I, I've noticed that every one of your pots is lifted off the ground by, you know, either concrete blocks or something else. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm familiar with plants finding happy, you know, happiness down in the ground. And so that's just so it doesn't send out roots and get going into the ground. Because they shoot sure will. Yeah, just one little root and then all of a sudden, you know, you get a big tree in the pot and you're wondering how can it grow so fast? And, yep. you know, a big old root down in the ground. Exactly. And you go to move it. And one thing about my garden, I have just as many in pots, if not more than in the ground. So I'm able, people that have traveled down to visit the garden, and one they'll, they'll come one year and then they come and they, and they like, it look different and I, I can change it. Right, yeah. But when them roots go through those pots. Yeah, it makes it a lot harder. It's done. You go to lift and it's like, ah, it ain't going nowhere. But yeah, that's that's been my, I guess you would say secret, which is really not a secret, you know. Rainwater, mulch, uh, every year and um the fish the so, fish is so do you collect rain water somewhere yes i do Ex yes mm -hmm. and and then you water them with buckets then? yes yes uh, do you um if you're out of town, like you recently were, mm -hmm. how long can they last in the buckets before they get dried out? Uh, it's according to the time of year. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, no problem. No you can problem. be gone for a week and they're still fine? Yes. Well, of course, we've had rain too, yeah. so that helps. That helps a lot. <laughs> but dead summer, I got to have somebody here. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it does get brutal. I have, I have gone to uh, Georgia and um, come back and everything is drooping you know it's drooping everything looking sad and they they're fussing at me like how can't you do this stuff yeah, you know we thought you cared <laughs> exactly so uh i have friends i have yeah friends. i believe that yeah. i have friends that come by a lot of friends yeah and uh, i assign each one of them I'm like look if you could please just get the section right behind the house and then i have another couple of guys get this area that we're going to walk past so it's it's like uh like a football coach in the zone decent you're covering this zone <laughs> okay you too back on this zone <laughs> yeah yeah and they're great great guys and and they get some mangoes during mango season that was, that's exactly what i was going yeah say. it's all all for the effort you know, yeah you know the reward go, go right ahead just don't bother the orange essence do not touch don't even think about the sugar loaf and leave the lemon meringue alone <laughs> So uh, you were mentioning earlier to me that there are certain varieties that you think do better in pots than in the ground. Absolutely. And so what varieties of mangoes do you prefer to grow in pots? Uh, absolutely. Uh, ice cream, thanks to y'all. <laughs> ice cream and, and hard as well. Um, uh, peach cobbler, which is, I hear to be commonly tough to produce. Um, one of my one of 
my most popular. I could watch this video two times a day, every day a week when you went to Marla's house. Uh -huh. I, oh, yeah, my, isn't I, that gorgeous? Yeah. Oh, I love that video. <laughs> Chris, I could watch that video again and again, but just listening to her talk about her peach cobbler, how she had been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. So I got peach cobbler in the ground and, no, you know. Not working. Yeah. Nah. Got some in pots. They're happy. Yeah. Yeah, so I've noticed uh, peach cobbler uh, real good uh, in the uh, uh, ice cream. Uh, even my pickerings do double the fruit in the pots than in the ground. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So, but there's some varieties that you just grow in pots for a while and then you put them in the ground. Yes, yes. So it's everything except for those varieties you just mentioned? Yeah, yeah. And so in general, you you, you step them up. You probably, this is a seven gallon pot mm -hmm. and uh, that looks like a 25. Yeah, so yeah. there's usually one step in between that. And so you start them in like a, a seven and then they end up in a 25. When they get too big for that, mm -hmm. they go in the ground. Yes, yes. It, it, it's time to get in the ground then, and um, un unless unless it's considered to be a mega tree, which you know, if, if there's, well, I don't really have those varieties that get you know VP Valencia Pride. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, and actually, my neighbor down the street, she has a Valencia Pride that's 40, 50 feet tall. Oh my. And yeah, <laughs> and I can get all the VPs from her. I want. I've introduced her to new varieties. Went down and grafted some of her seedling, so she's like, she's following your channel to as well she's gonna freak out to see this but uh the, the the ones that i've read and heard that are gonna get mega i'll keep them in the pot as well yeah yeah easier to keep them small and, and uh, you know if they can't send out their roots over you know 40 feet area they're not going to get as big because you know they're just like this is your home right here <laughs> yeah that's right and i learned that from richard Wynn. yeah uh southern spirits for life uh youtube channel he taught me that yeah, he was like, I went in his backyard, it's about the size of this corner, and he got like 70 varieties just right here. <laughs> and he, he, Chris, he took me to this tree and he's like, what variety you think that is? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. He said, that's a Valencia Pride, 10 <laughs> years old. How you like that? And I'm like, really? He said, dude, you can do it. You just got to restrict them and, and feed them and you can do it. And I'm like, okay. But those, those really good ones, I, I want to, I, I really feel like putting my other peach cobblers in a pot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So your your secret is basically, you know, don't, I mean, I, I, I found that you can't really put a little tree in a big pot and have it do well. It has to grow up in the pot it's in, then it goes up to the next size. You don't go from a seven to a 25 directly. You have to step it up. Right. But you're using compost, fish emulsion, mm -hmm. sand, mm -hmm. and some mulch. Yes. And then you use a little bit of Epsom salt. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're happy. Yeah. And rainwater. You got to do the rainwater. You oh. avoid all those chemicals in the city water. Yeah, yeah. Rainwater is key. I just dump it on them, and, and they, they're happy. They get just as happy, and, and I get good fruit production as well. So I'm, I'm quite happy about that, especially my ice cream. Oh, my goodness. In a pot. Thanks, Har. <laughs> you were right. Yeah, it does so good. Yeah. Good success. Well, great. Well, thank you very much for that. I know lots of people are interested in growing plants, especially mango trees in pots, and so I'm sure that's going to be helpful. Okay.